thanks for watching this free video tutorial which is a free sample from our course comprehensive introduction to Arnold 5 for Maya. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold for Maya thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. In this lesson we'll be taking a look at the transmission section of the standard surface shader. As you can see for this lesson, I have a few new geometries, including this bottle and this glass geometry. We still have our shader ball geometry that we'll be using later on in the lesson. But for now, we'll be sticking with this glass and bottle. Also, I have this kind of gems geometry. We take a look at them later on for some of the parameters in the transmission section. So for now, let me change this perspective panel to a hyper shade. And... Uh, Let's press tab and search for a standard surface. Select the bottle and the glass, assign the material to the selection and let me hide my outliner. And we can drag a region, just sim simply shift and drag or you can use this button here. Let me just select my standard surface shader and run the IPR. So if I come down to the transmission section, as you can see, uh, if I just go ahead and increase the weight parameter here to actually enable transparency and transmissive qualities, let's see what we're going to get. Okay, so now as you can see, we have some refractive quality, but the first thing and the first issue that we have here is obviously we get this very kind of dark shadows and this is because the objects have their opaque option enabled. So as I mentioned, we need to actually select our bottle geometry, come down to the Arnold tab and disable opaque for any transparent object that we have in the scene. Basically opaque, um, when you actually disable the opaque option, the shadows cast from the transparent object will look correct and if there was a refraction color, the shadows will pick up the color. To sum up, whenever you create a refractive object, disable the opaque option so it looks correct in your render, okay? Now let's get back to the standard surface shader and the transmission weight value here. Transmission basically allows light to scatter through the surface for materials such as glass or water. So you can create refractive and transmissive materials such as glass, water, honey, and so on using the transmission section of the Arnold standard surface shader. The first parameter here is the transmission weight, and this controls how much transmissive or refractive you want the shader to be. At zero, you have no refraction or transmission, and only base color and the specular reflections. And as I increase the transmission weight, and because the standard surface shader is energy conserving, increasing the transmission weight will result in ignoring the base color weight gradually. So if I just you can see, if I also take a look at my base color, you can see as we increase the transmission weight, take a look at the IPR we introduce more and more transmissive qualities and ignoring more and more of the uh, base or diffuse contribution of the shader and at one as you can see the base section of the shader is uh, ignored is grayed out completely because uh, this way the standard surface shader can actually be energy conserving prior to Arnold 5 we actually had to make sure this weight values are correct so the standard surface shader or the standard shader uh, that was called back then would remain actually energy conserving but right now as you can see everything is done automatically and as you have your transmission weight set to one the base contribution will be ignored completely okay now as you can see we have this uh, kind of glass like shader in our IPR. The next parameter that we have here is the transmission color, which controls the color of the light when it passes through a transmission shader. This color filters the refraction according to the distance traveled by the refracted ray. The longer uh, the light rays travel inside a mesh, the more it is affected by the transmission color. Therefore, for example, a green glass gets a deeper green as rays travel through thicker parts. So let's 
use maybe a color like this, maybe less saturated here. Naturally, colored glass has different shade of a color based on its thickness. Thinner parts will be tinted lighter and thicker parts will have darker shade of that color. In this case, you can see uh, we get this kind of lighter tint of green for these thinner parts and a darker tint of that green uh, or a more saturated tint uh, for the thicker parts. Now to control how exactly this transmission color affect your geometry, you have this depth parameter. And this depth value controls the depth into the volume at which the transmission color is realized. Increasing this volume makes the volume thinner, which means less absorption and scattering. Uh, so if we just go to something like one, you clearly see how it works. You can see now we have this clear contrast between this thicker parts and the thinner areas here. Let's go to maybe something like five. Now as we increase this volume, you can see the contrast between the thin and the thick parts of our geometry basically becomes less and less. Go to something like 10, we get a more even color. And basically this uh, depth here is a scale factor so that you can set a transmission color and then tweak the depth to be appropriate for the size of your object and control how the transmission color affect the thick and the thin parts of your objects. Okay. If I go to something like 20, you can see you barely see any uh, green shade. Let me maybe try something like 5 for now. Also, probably we can just use this white color and set the depth to 0. Now, the next important parameter is the IOR or the index of refraction, uh, which is this value here. Now, um, this IR value is both controlling the Fresnel reflectivity for the specular section and the index of refraction for the transmission section. And IR basically controls how much light rays will bend as they enter a medium. This value is 1 for vacuum, so the light won't bend in vacuum. If I just set this to 1, and probably to see it better, I'm going to use a roughness value of 0 0.5 here. So as you can see how the image behind these uh, glass objects or these transmissive objects are distorted. And this distortion will be controlled using IR. So if I go to something like one or vacuum, you can see the image behind these transmissive objects are not distorted at all. If I go to something like 1.33, which is the IR for water, as you can see, we get this distorted image behind our bottle and our glass. Uh, as I mentioned, you can use some presets here. So for example, for ice, uh, for something like water here, or 1.52 for most household glasses. Now, as you can see, the image becomes more distorted as you increase the IR value. You can find uh, the IR value for different materials on the internet if you wanted to. So that's the IR. And the next thing I want to talk about is the um, a roughness and how you control the roughness of your transmissive object. Obviously, as you can see, we don't have any specific roughness parameter in the transmission section. Uh, the roughness will basically uh, be controlled with the specular roughness because in real world, uh, a transmissive object will have the same roughness as its specular contribution. So you can use the specular roughness parameter here to control the specular reflection roughness and the transmission roughness. So if I increase the roughness to let's say something like 0.3, as you can see from the IPR, we get both a rough specular reflection and a rough transmission. Now, if I wanted to basically have a separate control over my transmission roughness, for example, if I want to have, let's say, a very sharp specular reflection, but a very rough transmission contribution, I can simply use this extra roughness parameter in the transmission section of the standard surface shader. So if I go to something like 0.3, while the roughness of my specular section is 0.05, let's see what's gonna happen. So as you can see now, we have a shader with very rough transmission contribution and very sharp specular reflections. In this case, let me set the extra roughness to zero. 
Now, the next important parameter that we have here is this dispersion app value. Now, to take a look at this parameter a bit better, let me just stop the IPR for now, hide the glass and the bottle geometries and unhide this gem here. And um, let's see, perfect. And this is the geometries that we have as you can see, here they are. Nice stuff. I'm probably going to, let's get back to the hyper shade window here. Okay, so let me just select this gem and make sure uh, it's opaque is disabled. And also let me just rename this material to something like glass so we can maybe glass material and select the gen geometry here and assign this. If I get back to my standard surface shader and we're talking about a dispersion app parameter here, dispersion app controls how much the index of refraction varies across wavelengths at zero, which is by default the dispersion app is turned off and the lower values, the more dispersion the shader would have. Normally you would use a value between 10 to 70 to stay in the normal range. And to get rid of any noise caused by the dispersion app effect, you need to actually increase your transmission samples in the render setting. So as you can see right now, we don't have any dispersion app, just a simple uh, render. Uh, and if I start, so I can actually take a snap so you can uh, compare this later on. Okay, so this is the render without dispersion app. Now let's set the dispersion app to something like 10. And this is the render with dispersion. So if I just compare it without dispersion, with dispersion, as you can see, it gives us this beautiful dispersion effect. And as you increase the dispersion app while you, you are making the dispersion effect less and less visible. And as you can see, you get some presets if you wanted to use a specific value. Now this is about the dispersion app and for now we can actually zero out the dispersion app value. Let me just stop the IPR and hide the gem and actually unhide our shader ball as well. Also make sure this liquid geometry also is So this two, okay, great. Now they are visible. Let's get back to the hyper shade panel here and select our shader ball geometries and assign the glass material that we have to take a look at some of the other parameters at the transmission section. As you can see, we have these two parameters that we have scatter and scatter and isotropy. Um, if I just run the IPR here, scatter allows you to simulate subsurface scattering for refractive objects and can be used to create shaders for high viscous liquids like honey, caramel, chocolate, or surfaces like ice or a polish and glass. So if I use a scatter color other than um, white and actually increase the depth value a bit to see the effect. Let's go to probably something like two. You can immediately see the effect. Just let's wait for the IPR to give us a cleaner render. And probably I'm just going to increase the roughness a bit to make the effect a bit more relatable. Now, as you can see how easily we get this kind of jam like shader using this scatter and the depth values of the transmission section of the standard surface shader. It's a very, very powerful shader. And I really like how easy it is to create amazing looking shaders. Now, the beautiful thing is if you take a look at the way the scattering is happening is that the thin parts are more transmissive and less uh, scattering. They're the, they are showing the subsurface scattering properties a bit less compared to the thicker parts and the thicker parts are having more subsurface scattering compared to the thinner parts. So this is amazing, right? We have this scatter and isotropy parameter and uh, basically this is the directional bias or an isotropy of the scattering. The default value of zero gives isotropic scattering so that 
uh, light is scattered evenly in all directions and positive values bias the scattering effect uh, forwards in the direction of the light while negative values bias the scattering backwards towards the light so if I take a look at the scatter positive scatter anisotropy the bias is forward in the direction of the light and negative scatter anisotropy value which biases the scattering backwards toward the light for now let me set the scatter anisotropy to zero okay folks now for the final shader let's quickly create something like a, a chocolate like shader just very quickly so i'm just going to actually create a chocolate and the process should be very very easy this uh, the current values can be used for something like jam but uh, for something like chocolate um let me use this RGB wall use 134 and 20. Let me just zoom in here to see what we're exactly creating. The depths wall you here, let's try something like one, maybe something like 0.5. or even 0.25 centimeters. I think this can give us a nice chocolate shader. Let me just render this section here to see what we're gonna get. You can see from this beautiful render, we have this thinner parts, which are more transmissive compared to the thicker parts, which have more subsurface scattering properties. And you can see the same thing is happening here. So this is our chocolate shader. And let's, for the final render, probably going to increase my camera samples to five, diffuse, specular, and transmission samples to four. And this should be enough. And make sure test resolution 100, progressive refinement is disabled. And just let's start the final render and see what we're gonna get. Okay, folks, so here is our final render and we get this beautiful chocolate shader using this standard surface shader. We can obviously add uh, a bit more variation to the specular roughness just to make it a bit more interesting, but I leave that to you. As you can see, just using these simple parameters, we have created this delicious chocolate shader. See you in the next lesson to talk about subsurface scattering in the standard surface shader. See you there. Thanks for watching this free video tutorial, which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Arnold 5 for Maya. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold for Maya thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out.